right, you you did get that 240. So very good, very good. Definitely hearing stuff. Um, and then you're catching a lot of things that uh, you, you recognize when things are off and whatnot. So that's good, very good. All right, so this new one is basically kind of easing into a polyrhythm. So what you have here, uh, this, the rhythm's the same every single bar. I just notated it three different ways, just in case you come across one of those three ways. I feel this is the easiest way to see what's happening with the count, because you got the downbeat of one you come in on. You let that ring out across the downbeat of two, then you strum again on the upbeat of two, and then that rings out across all of beat three, and then you strum again on, on the four. So, how's this polyrhythm? It's because you are evenly spacing two chords across the three beats. And that's what this little two-plet thing here is saying, or a little bracket, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's the saying that these, are, these two chords are evenly spaced, but it's across the three beats. And then here we have the dotted quarter notes, which, uh, if you remember, when you dot something, you extend the length of that note by half. So quarter note plus half of that is an eighth note. And we clearly see that here. So the quarter note tied to the eighth, it's the same length as doing it that way. So again, three different ways of seeing the exact same rhythm. Now, to really help ensure that the rhythm stays accurate, I want you to keep that right hand moving as much as you can. Once you get into like crazy fast tempos, it may not be necessary to keep the hand moving. So what do I mean by that? Uh, adding, some people like to call it ghost strums. Basically, you, you hit the first chord, and then you gotta do a missed upstroke and a missed downstroke. So that takes into account the spacing of three eighth notes, like one, two, three, and then hit it again. One, two, three, one. So one and a two and a three. I did that wrong. One and a two. No. One and two and three and four. Now I wonder what the heck I was just saying. So, pretending I didn't say the last five seconds worth of crap, we're going, you hit one, two, three, one, two, three, one. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So I'm like counting how many times I'm moving my hand. So we're, we're hitting like the first of every three strums, basically. Uh, with the eighth note count, we have one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. So keeping the hand moving like that is like your own natural metronome following the non-natural metronome, right? So let's, uh, let's get to demonstrating here. And then if all goes well, we're going to have this polyrhythm idea just be continuous. So I don't know how much about polyrhythms you know, but basically like, like the metronome is, is clicking along at one specific pace, right? So it's clicking at the in this case, the 60 beats per minute for those three beats, while these two chords are being strummed at its own pace. So we will end up having like a continuous polyrhythm happening. So the metronome is always clicking at a specific pace and then the chords are being strummed at their own even tempo. So basically it's like two different tempos happening at the same time, but they always keep lining up after a certain amount of uh, clicks. In this case, it would be three. So it's not a continuous polyrhythm throughout here because we always have that quarter note resetting everything at the uh, end of the bar. So I do have like a whole polyrhythm course, uh, like a YouTube thing I did, like a four video series on it. So I could send that to you if you'd like. Um, if you want to know more in-depth polyrhythm info, if you don't know it already. Anyway, time for me to shush and play. All right, 60 beats per minute. One, two, three, four, one. And four, one. And 
four, one. time that's what I want you to do it really does help make sure that everything is where it needs to be like your it makes it easier to hit the chords when they're supposed to be hit by keeping that hand moving 180 one two one two three four two forty one two one two three four Even at the 240, I was still able to keep the hand going. So I want you to try doing that best you can. It really, I feel it really, really helps get good pick control as well as making it easier to hear and feel this type of rhythm. All right, any questions come up, let me know. I'll see you in your next video.